Good afternoon, and welcome to part four of the BM309 amplifier rebuild. And I've been working on this for about three hours. And I got the electrolytics in, and I had one hell of a time soldering. I had to crank up the soldering station to full so much it tarnished the tip and uh, running it through this uh, copper or br brass uh, pad here helped but I needed to run full heat now I've heard on soldering techniques you shouldn't hold a soldering iron more than two or three seconds well, that's a lot of BS with a capital B and a capital S I needed to hold it on there as 20 seconds as long as 30 seconds in order to get the damn thing to take. Some of my connections just popped right off. Some of them I had to tack in. I hated tacking, but I had to. Uh, but uh, most of them to wrap around the terminals and soldered. What you're probably wondering why all these clip leads are in here. What I've got right here is I'm feeding in B plus voltage on the diode, which will feed into the capacitors. And I'm using the ICO 950 for the power supply. Right now, I've got it to 170 volts. And uh, we're gonna crank her up to the max of 250. I checked each electrolytic and each one is fine. I checked them on the capacitor bridge. Oh, yeah, 250. So we're keeping an eye on uh, on this. We're never going to have 250 volts on this circuit. There's no tubes in it. I'm just running the B plus to make sure there's no shorts. This is one of the preferred ways, at least that's the way I've always done it, is with the tubes out after you put in the electrolytics and replace it and all the resistors, you want to run your power supply, whatever power supply you, you have, in this case the ICO 950, which works very well for this, feed in a, a the rated B plus voltage. That way, if there's any problem, it'll show up now rather than to wait until the rectifier is, kicks in when you plug the thing into the wall. That don't mean we're not going to use the dim bulb on this. We are still going to be doing that. So let's see what we're at now. We're at 230 volts. Well, we know we're safe. And let's bring it right to 250. This is pretty much on. And the only complaint about this, as I had said before when I was doing it, is the expanded range scale does not work on this. It's very, very broad, and the eye hardly moves. But I think that's normal with these things. So that's why I got that uh, little digital handheld unit, this one here to test my high volt, higher capacity capacitors. This reads up to 10,000 microfarads. Okay, we're up to 245 volts. So we're safe. We're safe. Uh, so we do, what we'll do is we'll disconnect it and then put the power down because you don't want to damage your control by shunting out the electrolytics with this control. That's how they get burned out. So the electrolytics are disconnected here. And we put it back on the capacity. We'll shut this off. And you can see right now, I got the meter on it with 232 volts right now. It's still holding because there's, the amplifier doesn't have any tubes, so there's no current drawer. So that's showing all the capacitors are working. And I had, as I said, a hell of a time seeing. Very, very frustrating. I come very close to giving up on this. 
because of my eyesight, no other reason. I tried soldering iron this here, and uh, I left the soldering iron five or 10 seconds, and the damn solder wouldn't take. It's cold solder joint, so I cranked the soldering station up full. Give it the max. Usually I run it at one, one o'clock position on here. You also probably noticed a few, day, a few days ago I did this. I took one of these plastic uh, domes that come on the uh, little LED um, uh, night lights. And one was defective. The resistors are gone in, in the base. So the light didn't light anymore. I broke off the uh, light and I uh, epoxy this on the top of this to protect that diode sticking up there because I kept brushing into it each time I reach over and turn the switch off. I always turn this off in between solderings. I don't leave it on. This is what, this one's cracked, but this is what they look like um, on those little LED, single LED night lights that replace the incandescent, the C7 bulb. So I thought this was quite unique to be able to use this as a cover to protect the LED on my soldering station. So that was what I did off camera the other day here. I don't throw anything away. I make use of everything if it's usable. So it's still uh, got 210 volts on it. All right, so naturally I'm gonna discharge this before I continue working on it. I'm about ready to fire this up with the tubes in it. I have to hook a couple little speakers to it and I don't have any speakers in this shop here other than the ones that are hooked to the stereo. I don't want to unhook those, but I'll find something to put on it and check and see if the amplifier is working. And uh, uh, Bob brought over the uh, fuse holders, so here is one of them right here. Uh, of course, this is the kind that you got to put a little terminal lug on the end of the wire to uh, do that. Um, let me discharge this and we'll get back on this again. All right, I'm going through the magnifier and I'm not moving the chassis around like I did on the last video. You know, when I'm working along like this, I don't like to fuss around with the camera. I try to do the best I can, but I know how frustrating and irritating it is. It's irritating to myself when I'm watching videos that are shaky. So I don't always practice what I preach. Um, I put one here using uh, spaghetti tubing. This is the common negative. This is where the diode is. This is a 120 ohm flame proof resistor, which uh, Bob picked up. This is a 1500 ohm uh, flame proof resistor. These are two watts. Uh, the other filter capacitor, as I said, I didn't really want to do that, but it's down in the corner here. This is the input here. But I don't think it's going to hurt anything. It's tucked down. I got the common negative. This is the common negative here. Then there's a wire that runs underneath this terminal strip. And this is the other connection for the um, common negative. So you got the common negative here. And you got the same thing here on these left-hand terminals. And then you've got a 47 microfarad, which is this one right here, at 250 volt working volts, connected here to here, okay? Then you've got the common negative here. Then you've got the 100 microfarad right here. You can't see it because it's turned around, but that's 100 microfarad at 250 volts. These are the capacitors Bob picked up. And um, its common negative is here, of course, because all, all electrolytics share the same common negative. And this is the input, which is 100. This was originally 80 on the unit. So it's got 100 as the input. Then your 120 ohm filter resistor here. And then your other 47 microfarad, 250 volt electrolytic, it's common 
negative is on the common negative here. Here it is right here. This is the other 47. So you got a 47 here. We got a 47 over here and we got a 100 over here. So we got them all in the chassis and running a straight edge here. We are all clear. Nothing's going to stick up. And naturally this chassis sits this way and I have to remove these again because there's just enough clearance to slide under the record changer board. So nothing can be mounted on top here, not even the fuse holder. This just barely clears, this terminal here, strip, just barely clears that plywood where the record changer goes because it's got to slide under that plywood and cut, the knobs have got to come out the front of the unit. So, 12AX7, <clears throat> 50EH5, left and right channel. That's what this uses, three tubes. Now, uh, I'm a junk collector. Don wanted the schematic. I uh, can't scan the schematic because I'd have to move my security camera uh, monitor and my uh, uh, security DVR, which sits on top of my printer because everything's crowded in this place. So what I did, uh, Don, for you, and I haven't had a chance to send it to you yet, because I've been busy as a one-armed paper hanger with the crabs out here. Boy, it is my buttage. Uh, this is the, uh, the VM309 schematic, which I photographed with my um, 16 megapixel camera, I believe it is. So I took about three or four shots on the macro, so hopefully it will get one good one, so it should be able to get it out to you. But this is the VM schematic now. This is not uh, the one you've got, but you had expressed interest in it, so um, maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. I would think that VM makes their own uh, stuff. But I could be wrong on that. I've been known to be wrong many times. So anyways, when I get a chance later on tonight, by the time you get to watch this video, you'll probably already have them. I'll send it to you. Now, <clears throat> on to this. This is the 5 watt, 22 ohm, not fusible resistor that replaced the five, uh, 3 watt, 22 ohm fusible resistor. So we gotta still put a, a fuse in here, but what I'm gonna do, I can't put this under here, there's no room. I could probably stick it over here, but you see where these wires come through here? So I can't really, can't really jam it in there. There's, there's just no room here. So I may have to mount this, like it or not, on the outside side of the chassis on the back, back apron, which is this is the back apron where the electrolytic come out. I could probably put it right in this area here. Which means it could become a shock hazard had you, you know, but you're not supposed to change the fuse with the power turned on anyways and plugged in. <laughs> but that's probably what I'll do. And that's probably the, one of the last things I'll do. I may or may not mount that uh, today, what I'm going to probably do is um, maybe that'll be in part. Uh, this is part four now, I think. I lost track. I think it is. Yeah, we uploaded three last night, so this would be four. So I had one hell of a time working on this. I'm telling you, it's one of the most difficult jobs I have ever done, and I think it's not only a, uh, cramped. But my eyesight is so bad, I, I, like I say, I just, I come pretty damn close to throwing in the towel and saying the hell with it and just give this hobby up because I'm, uh, I get so, so aggravated. You don't want to have me record while I was doing this. Believe me, you would not want to have or hear that video. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now... This morning, Bob gave me uh, the um, electrolytics, which are 250 
rather than 350. Remember showing you that 350 is going to be a little large. These are about a quarter inch shorter, and that makes a big difference when you're working in cramped spaces like this. Now, this 22 ohm 5 watt resistor, like I say, replaced a 22 ohm fusible 3 watt resistor. The diode. Uh, Don had expressed if this had a selenium rectifier. No. There's the diode way down there. I had to tuck it in and use a tiny needle nose. The diode is sitting underneath there. It's a little flat thing. Looks like uh, the size of a diamond, not much thicker. It's 200 milliamps. That's all it's rated for. So that's all you got going through this B plus is 200 mils at the max. That's the max. It's probably only got about 70 maybe. Depends on what the tubes do are. So it's not much. So I didn't have to replace it, but I had to use so much heat on this. And this connection popped off. This, I had to tack this on, and I had a blob of solder on there. And I went to connect this end, and this damn thing popped off. I held that iron on there and kept feeding solder in there, and I held it on for 20 seconds, if not 30 seconds. You know, the iron heats up good, but for some reason, I don't know, I'm having a lot of problems with this, with soldering, and it's it's my damn eyesight. I can't see what I'm doing, and it's so damn frustrating. It takes the joy out of the hobby. It, honest to God, it takes the joy out of it. And like I say, uh, turn this off here. Like I say, I can't use this because I got that humongous monitor here that takes, it'll stick way the hell out here. I mean, it worked, and I can't be soldering here and and uh, working on that. One of my viewers, and I kind of did not respond to it, offered something a while back a monitor, but you know, I don't want to take stuff from people. I feel like a leech when I do that, and it just bothers me. I'm sorry. That's me. I don't like, you know, when I mention something in a video, it doesn't mean that I want people to go out and buy stuff for me. I don't go for that. That's me. You got to, that's just the way I am. I appreciate it, believe me, but you know, I'll, I'll make do. I'll do the best I can with what I got. Eventually, yes, I got to get a small flat screen monitor, but this 10 and a half inches from here to here, it has to fit underneath here. If it, if it don't, it's no good. Now, I've got a, my Dell D600, which has Windows 90, no, it has Windows 2000 in it, which was installed by a friend of mine. And I'm going to stick that in here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be getting a um, a uh, microscope camera that's USB. It's the better one that uh, the guy from Australia, I can't, I think his first name is Dave, reviewed uh, a few years ago. There was two of them he reviewed. Uh, I'm getting the better one cost, uh, I think it was like $65 on Amazon. That was my Christmas request. So I get that. I'll be able to put the laptop here. Um, but the laptop is still going to take up room on the bench, but not as much. And I could probably work around it. I could probably set it over here. I'm going to have to work with that situation until I can get a small flat screen that has composite video input. If it don't have the composite, I cannot use this camera here. It has, this is composite output. Here is the uh, output plug right here, which has to have an adapter to go into the RCA. All right. Found a couple of speakers in the shed. I knew I had these. I bought these at a yard sale. I'm going to probably say 15 years ago. I don't take, throw anything away as long as I got the room for it and it works. Uh, they're three inch speakers, realistic, the three inch ones. I've got the ones that have the four inch also. Used to use those in addition to the big uh, speakers out for the cookouts. So I'm going to have these for the, uh, these are going to be my test speakers. I've just got some lamp cord here. And I'm going to uh, make up 
a wire, then I'm gonna put one on one end of the bench and one on the other. And just so I'll be able to hook and test things out like this. So this will be, these aren't too big. They're probably about uh, maybe uh, six inches tall. You know, they're not, they're not very large and they, they're eight ohms and they don't need to be high power because it's only to test small stuff like this. So I'm about ready to test this out uh, on the bench here after I get, I got a bypass, there's a switch in here for the record changer. And I, I got to jump that out. And when I put the fuse in, it's going to be probably in the main line, probably in one of these wires here where the switch is. And uh, it'll either be either that fuse block, block will be on the bottom of the record changer itself or uh, on the back of this amplifier. Either way, you have to take out the changer in order to replace the fuse. But you'd have to do that to replace the fusible resistor anyways. And when the fusible resistor, which originally, like I say, this is not a refusable resistor anymore uh, because we can't get them locally. Uh, <clears throat> when that goes, it usually means you got a bad electrolytic somewhere or a short somewhere in the, in the B plus line or elsewhere. All right, I got one speaker stuck up over here. And I got the other one stuck over in this corner here. So these will be my uh, test speakers, and I'll leave those in the shop. And I'm about ready to hook up this amplifier. The moment of truth, here it comes. All right, we gotta put the tubes back in. I gotta remove this, but right now we'll leave it on here. We just. This is a weird setup that uses the hinges for connecting the speakers. All right, there's your 12AX7. These tubes were tested and they're good. Lift the EH5. Lift the EH5. I got the gray and the black jumped out on the plug because that's the record changer switch. The other two are the motor for the motor. And actually this is the this green goes to the record changer chassis. So actually one of these is a hot wire uh, that supplies the motor and the other is the neutral. So we're set there. We're ready to go. And for a test I'll just take and touch the RCA plugs here, and hopefully you'll be able to see me in the camera. And we're uh, we're plugged into the dim bulb. I took out the hundred watt. I got only I only have a sixty watt. So really should put a forty in, but um, that's all right. We're going to turn on the. Uh, the variac, but we're going to set the variac for 115 volts. Oh, let's see. 117. And then we put the isolation transformer on. And the isolation transformer is drawing about 400 mils. We talked about that before. All right, so the dim bulb is not lit. I'm hearing hum. Is the left channel? Is the right channel? Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Hop, hop, one, two, three, four. You're in the army now. You're in the army now. You son of a bitch, you'll never get rich. You're in the army now. <laughs> All right, so it's working, guys and gals. And we're on isolation transformer. We're on a dim bulb. We're as safe as we can be. So that's what you want to do. You want to always run uh, your B+. Plus 
with a power supply and bring it up that way. It's a safe way to do it. You don't have to do it that way. As long as you're fused and protected to a dim bulb, you're okay. All right. So, let's see. This is a tone, I think. The cabinet's put off to the side. I really can't tell. A little bit of static and not much. Okay, volume's all the way down, volume's all the way up, okay, well Bob, we got a fix for you, the only thing I got to do is put the fuse in here, so um, what we'll probably do is, uh, Make one more final video, and uh, if this video is too long, then uh, we'll make a part four or a part five. What, what is this? This is part four, I think. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, if there's another part to this series, it'll be the final test of the actual record player. And uh, I got some, uh, some of this oil here that I got at a yard sale this past summer for 50 cents. It's a mineral oil, and I think it'll be very good for the motor bearings and so forth. I don't have a pin oiler. Uh, actually, I do. Hang on. I have this. I had this for about 40 years or more. And it's empty, but I can put some of that oil in here, and I can oil the um, motor bearings, idler wheel uh, bearings, and everything in the record changer. And uh, use some luber plate on a, a very, very little bit, but a little luber plate on the sliding mechanisms and so forth on the record changer. I'll probably do all that. If, if there's another part to this video... Um, I will uh, do that and include that in the uh, video. So this concludes part number four. Stay tuned for part number five, coming to a computer near you. This is the half-ass blind tinkerer bidding you all a good day and... I doubt I'll have the video up before Christmas, so Merry Christmas. I don't go for happy holidays. It's Merry Christmas. Thank you, everybody, for watching.